The idea, rather, is learn from those bad decisions. Develop through those poor choices. Allow yourself to be transformed in your response to the bad decisions that you make. To the bad decisions that I make. During this series, one of the things that we've done is we've had different individuals come up and share with you um, and, and preach because they responded to an opportunity to grow in the area of preaching. And so they come up and they share a portion of the message each week. Um, and it's proven to not be a bad idea. It's gone great. I've loved it. Um, and this morning, as we talk about bad decisions, it actually works out even better for me. Uh, because at this point in the message, it would make a lot of sense for me to now share with you a personal bad decision. But instead, I'm going to invite Clayton Grisham to the stage. <laughs> God, thank you for Clayton. Thank you for his willingness to come and talk and share. Would you just calm his nerves now? Uh, he's prepared. He knows what he's going to talk about. Would you just help him to be able to share that? Uh, help us to receive what he has to say. Thank you for his willingness to do this. Uh, God, be with him now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So when I was in about second grade, about eight years old, and uh, Micah, my little brother, was about six years old. Uh, our family, the Grisham family, went on a grocery trip to the Costco Wholesale over in Shoreline. And as a lot of you may know, Costco over there is across the parking lot from Home Depot, and then uh, somewhere between there, there's a Starbucks sitting there. So we made our way over to the Costco and got all our groceries done. And then after that, we decided, Dad decided, we needed to go get stuff from Home Depot. So we went over to Home Depot. Um, and we were going down the aisles, and for whatever reason, my dad's always done this, but he was speed walking down all the aisles like he was on some sort of mission, leaving Micah and I with our tiny little legs uh, trying to follow him. And so we got a little bit lost at one point, and so our eyes started to wander, and we started to explore the aisles for ourselves a little bit, and we came across one of those little uh, cardboard foldouts that they've got sitting on the side sometimes. You know, they got duct tape in there usually or something. Well, we found one that was almost sort of a little um, plastic bracket. It was almost like a corner for a couple uh, boards or pieces of wood or something. So it was kind of a form for you to screw those two boards into. And um, at the time, we had a next door neighbor who was building a tree house in their backyard. So we decided, well, I decided that those were something we really needed in order to finish the <laughs> tree house. So I picked up one of those little brackets and I gave, I gave Micah one of them. I said, Micah, here, you take this, put it in your pocket. We're gonna give it to Clark and that's gonna help him finish the house. Um, and then I took another one, a different color, of course, and put it in my pocket. And so um, we finished shopping, went through the store, and after that, we decided to go to Starbucks. So our whole family's sitting over at Starbucks. Um, we got our drinks and we're just sitting there and I see Micah starting to you know, play with his pocket a little bit and I'm trying, Micah, Micah, don't worry about this. <laughs> Going like this. Finally, finally he pulls it out and he goes, Dad, look what I got. <laughs> and I go, Micah, Micah, and Dad goes, where'd you get that, Micah? I said, well, Clayton got it for me at Home Depot. <laughs> I go, so Clayton, how did you get those? And I was like, well, they're on a shelf on the side. So I grabbed one. They're, they're for the treehouse, Dad. And he goes, did you, did you guys pay for them, though? Well, no, I mean, we, they're just sitting there, you know, so we just grabbed a couple, you know. Well, right then, my dad picked us up, I'm sure by our ears, and drove us all the way back over to Home Depot. He took us inside the front door, there was a little bench there, he said, sit here and do not move. So he, he, he sets us down, he walks over to one of the cashiers, and he said, and he, I see him whispering something into his ear. Sure enough, the sirens at the front of the store and the lights, <laughs> all this stuff is going on. All these people that have no idea what's going on are looking at the front, seeing these two little kids sitting there freaking out while the sirens are going off, the lights are going off. And then my dad went and got the manager. And um, my dad's a pretty big guy, right? Well, this manager came out and he was towering over my dad and probably an easy 50 pounds bigger. So he's just this massive man. He comes out and he comes right up to Micah and I and he goes, did you guys take something from my store? <laughs> and Mike and I freaking out, we, we picked up the little pieces we took and gave them back to him. And obviously it wasn't that big a deal. They couldn't have cost more than 50 cents. They're just little pieces of plastic, right? But he definitely made sure to explain to us that you could not just take things from the store and leave. You had to pay for everything, no matter what it's worth. Um, so, Mike and I made a bad decision. Mostly me, Mike had just followed along. <laughs> I made a bad decision when I chose to take those things from the store. Um, and then 
when my dad found out about that bad decision, the consequence was him taking us back to Home Depot and having us treated like criminals. And I gotta say, it's kind of a brilliant idea for him to have done that, as long as you think that brilliant is having your elementary age kid thinking his future will be significantly more difficult with a robbery now on his credit card. <laughs> I went on for years after that worried about my chances of getting a car or getting through high school fine or getting into a college now that I was a robber. Convicted felon. Um, but years later I realized that that bad decision only taught me a lesson. It taught me not to be a criminal. The reality for all of us is that a bad decision doesn't have to be the definition of who you are. Yeah. <coughs> you may have made some bad financial decisions. You might be in a stu stuck in a tough place right now. You're having trouble, you're going from bill to bill, the money just going away like that. You don't have to be a financial disaster. You need to make some smarter choices, maybe. You need to be wiser about where you're spending your money, where you're putting it. Maybe you need to start putting more money into tithes and trusting God with your money. But with some smarter choices, you're gonna be able to work past that. Maybe when you were younger, going through college, you chose the wrong degree, and now you're stuck in a miserable career. You're not happy where you are. You don't have to be stuck there, either. You might need to change the way you live a little bit, you might need to go back and get a little bit of a different education or even more education. But again, you can, you can work past that decision you made when you were younger. And you can be in a happier place in the end. <coughs> Maybe your bad decision is that you choose to wear orange sweatshirts all the time. <laughs> so, so if that's you, episodes of what not to wear. <laughs> but whatever bad decision you made, you can overcome that bad decision and you can move beyond it. One of the most well-known people in the Bible, one of the most celebrated and looked up to figures in the Bible, made some really poor decisions. Now we probably all heard of David. Um, David grew up as a shepherd boy. He developed into a poet and continued his rankings up to a soldier, and eventually he became king. And typically when we think of David and poor decisions that he made, we think of the lady that he had an affair with, and later while he was running from it, had her husband killed in order to hide it. That wasn't a good decision, and thankfully Brent didn't ask me to focus on that story. I'm not sure. <laughs> but another decision that David made had even worse consequences because of his defiance towards God. Years before David became, became king, God led the people of Israel out of Egypt and out of slavery. He offered them a deal where he would provide everything they needed, as long as the Israelites were to trust him and to never fear their safety. They did it for years, a really long time. Finally, they asked for a king on the ground, a human, a little bit easier to communicate with. So God gave them their king, God gave them David. And years later, um, they were worried about what would happen if they went into war. And David thought that he knew better than God. So he decided, you know what? I need to take record of everything we have on the ground. God, I know that, I know that you've kind of got this overview of what's going on down here, but I'm actually down here and I can see everything we have and it's looking like we might have some trouble. So I'm gonna go around and count my men and count our resources and make sure that if we go into battle, we'll still be safe. So David said he was going to take a census. He was going to record all the things he had. And it's, it's not a bad thing for us to keep track of what we have. Obviously, it's kind of an important thing for us to know what we have. The problem with David's census was the reasoning for it. David was choosing to turn away from God, to turn from his reliance from God, and saying that he didn't think that God alone could handle the situation. <coughs> He didn't think that God alone would keep them safe. So David went ahead thinking he was making wiser decisions than God, and he chose to put himself in God's possession, position right next to him and take the census. But before David could take the census, he had a friend that came to him and tried to talk to him. He tried to say, look, I've heard some things. 
taking a census is a bad idea, okay? God's been on our side all this time. He's kept us protected. We're still safe right now. There's no need for a census. And David said, look, I'm, I'm the king. I think I know what I'm doing. So David went ahead and took the census anyway. He had all of his armies counted, all of his men, all of his military. And shortly after the census was taken, he learned a very big lesson about how his bad decisions, especially those that defy God, can go against him and have serious consequences. consequences. David learned that sin always comes with consequences. Now, not all bad decisions are sin, but all sin is a bad decision. And most of the time, with a bad decision, we're going to face some consequences. But every time we sin, we will definitely face consequences. During this time period, um, there wasn't a Bible. As a matter of fact, these people we're talking about right now, their lives eventually were the stories that were made into the Bible that we look at today. So at the time, God used prophets to communicate with the people on the ground. These prophets could hear the things that God wanted them or God wanted to say, and these prophets would then take that information and deliver it to God's desired recipients. So, God decided he would send David a prophet by the name of Gad. So, Gad went to visit David and explained that his bad decision had turned away from God. He had ignored God's offer from the very beginning of keeping them safe. He had ignored his reliance on God. And because of that, his bad decision was going to have a serious consequence. So God gave David three choices. And Gad, while explaining this, said, first, the first option is that you can have three years of famine in your country of Israel. The second option is you could have three months of running from your enemies and face the possibility of being killed if you're caught. The third option is three days of plague across your nation. Thousands of people could die. Let's say you said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to opt for the plague. I mean, it's only three days, right? Well, as it turns out, that plague actually devastated the country. 70,000 people died. It totally swept the nation. A majority of us can remember 9-11. I myself was only three years old. And I was sitting in on my mom's bed while she was doing her hair and getting ready in the morning, and she got a call from my dad. And he says, turn on the news, and they hung up. And she came in, and their room, and the little TV sitting there, and I watched as there were replay videos of the planes crashing into the Twin Towers, and then crumbling and falling, and havoc everywhere, and chaos. We continued watching the news throughout the day, everyone was. At the end of the day, the death toll was 2,996. And we'll never forget that. It totally rocked us as a nation. But this plague in Israel, it knocked out 70,000 people. Imagine how that would devastate a country. I mean, every single person that didn't die would have known many that did. David messed up. He made a really bad decision, and it impacted way more than just himself. In just a minute, I'm going to hand it back over to Brent. But before we do, I just want to read a few verses about the restoration and the recovery of David's bad decision. The story begins in 2 Samuel 24. It's about three-eighths of the way through your Bible. And the verses are in the message notes as well as on the screen. It says, But the king replied to Aruna. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. <laughs> that day, Gad came to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him. God's message through Gad was essentially saying, It's time to move on. It's time to get past this bad decision. He never mentioned what happened in the past. He wasn't concerned about it anymore. What was done was done. He was ready for the next step. He wasn't going to make David dwell on what he did. He wasn't going to reflect on it. The bad decision was behind them, and God was saying, All right, you learned your lesson, and now it's time to heal. So David responded. David went up, and he built that altar, just as God had done. I asked him to do. David wasn't defeated by his bad decision. David's bad decision wasn't the end 
of him. David decided that his bad decision, he could move past, move onward. At this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Brent. Thank you. Those points that Clayton are making are so huge. You're welcome to say. You want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> you can stay. I don't care.